Hey guys, welcome to episode 5, the penultimate episode of our editing crash course. And in this episode, we're going to look at how to deliver your content. As always, as a basics crash course, we're only going to be focusing on the fundamentals of the delivery page. So as a new user, you'll be able to get your edit ready for delivery without knowing every nook and cranny of the delivery page. So to render your edit first, we have to go to the delivery page. The delivery page, like every other page, has its own layout, but it's familiar enough that after working through the last few episodes, you should be able to find your way around without getting lost. In basics, to the top left, we have our render settings panel. Here you will be selecting which settings you want your video to render at. In the center, we have a viewer so we can watch back the completed edit. To the top right, we have a render queue where your edit's ready to be rendered. We'll wait for you to click start render. Underneath is a clip display which can be hidden and under that we have a non-editable timeline. And by that what I mean is that we can zoom in, we can select the clips, we can have a look at what is on the timeline, however we cannot adjust anything on there. So let's have a look at the render settings panels first. This will be your first port of call when opening the delivery page. From the file name and location to codec and bitrate, it's all confirmed in this panel. I remember when I first started filmmaking, render settings were always a little bit of a mystery to me. One video tutorial is telling you to render at this setting, another article is telling you to make sure you export in this format, and it can quickly get confusing. Well, if you are completely new to filmmaking or Resolve, well, Resolve helps streamline that process with a set of one-click presets. You can choose from a YouTube upload to audio only, and most pre-made delivery presets are so streamlined it will only leave you with the need to click start render. In this theoretical upload, my video is going to YouTube and nowhere else, so I'm going to select YouTube. As 4K is slowly becoming the norm, you do have the option available when clicking the drop down menu on the YouTube tab, but I'm going to stick with 1080. Now, Resolve has changed the render settings to conform to YouTube's suggested upload format, and essentially all we have to do is specify the location and we're good to go. Although, you can indeed still customize each setting. So let's have a look at what's on hand. First, we have the format and codec. And as stated in YouTube's online help section, its preferred online format is QuickTime with a H.264 codec. Resolve has automatically set that for me. But if you were to ever render the file for offline viewing, you would perhaps need something with less compression and that can be changed within these submenus. The initial YouTube preset will also restrict your bitrate to 10,000 kbs kilobytes a second, but if you do want that extra bit of clarity at the cost of a larger file, you can change the quality to best. If you need to change the audio settings or the file settings, you do that by hitting the audio or file button which will swap out the sub panel. I sometimes find that new users get lost in trying to find the audio settings as it's a case of hiding in plain sight. Although rarely used, you can, if needed, render out your edit into individual clips by selecting this option. But for the majority of the time, you need to make sure that single clip is selected. When all of your settings have been confirmed, you hit add to render queue. Upon doing so, your edit under those settings has been sent to the queue on the right. But before rendering, you might have need for a shorter version of your edit, perhaps a 20 second Instagram ad. Therefore, what we could do is head to the timeline and instead of rendering entire timeline, we can select render in and out range. Then, by using the same keyboard shortcut as on the edit page, which is I and O, we can create a 15-20 second range. With our two versions ready, we can now hit start render. So that's it, that's the delivery page in a nutshell. It's nice to have an actual dedicated page for delivery and not just a small pop-out window. So for our final episode, we're going to look at adjusting some of the internal settings that we haven't covered and a few editing elements that can be found only when using the fusion tools or the color page. But from episode one to five, you should now be able to import media, edit your media and deliver it. Catch you again.